to just make sure we keep the pace. Yeah. Still okay, work. ready to rock and roll? Yeah. Right. You saying I'm slow? <laughs> no. You saying I waffle on? <laughs> Right, I'll get them all in. Just waiting for one last class to join. So just one second. <clears throat> we'll start and hope they can join in a minute. Right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this uh, teaching live special. Uh, with me, John Sutton, and my two Teaching Live uh, teammates. First of all, I'll introduce you to Mr. Pi Corbett. Good morning, Pi. How are you? Hello there. No, I'm very well and uh, excited to be working with this uh, fresh group. And we're going to be uh, working on something creative and fascinating, something that's always intrigued me a whole business of masks and wearing masks and different types. I've got my mask, my teacher's mask, which is a sort of um, quite um, a serious but fun thing that I have. But I've got my home mask. In fact, different situations, you could almost say we all put on slightly different masks. So we're going to invent some, and some create some interesting masks today. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I've written and edited over 250 books I um, was a teacher and a head teacher, and I even um, did some inspecting as well a long, long time ago. Um, uh, and um, I come to this both as a teacher and as a writer, a storyteller and a poet. So that's a little bit about me. And I'm going to introduce David. And David and I worked together on various uh, online projects for many years now. We have indeed, Pi. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, yes, I, my background, I'm David Mitchell. My background is uh, a teacher, head teacher. Uh, now work with schools on exciting projects around technology and writing. So I love my technology. Uh, that's pro possibly my main role here. If I'm quiet, I'm busy with multiple screens around me doing uh, things throughout the session. Um, but really looking forward to what we've got planned today. And so I hope you enjoy it. Um, right. So, anything to say before we start, John? Presumably, well, everyone <clears throat> looking up at the just, screen at the yeah, front. Just, just, a, just a quick couple of bits of housekeeping. First of all, uh, teachers, I can see that uh, most of you have joined us uh, via Zoom. We have got uh, a few schools also on the YouTube live stream. So we do, we always have two options when we when we are. Uh, broadcasting our session so in case there's a problem with one you can always use the other so uh children you on your devices you simply need to be on the teachinglive.net website you don't need to do anything you just need to watch the session and we'll give you instructions as we go through as to what you've got to do so hopefully if you just follow what we're telling you on on screen uh we'll have no problems Obviously, if you subscribe to Teaching Live, each week we follow the same format of session, so the children very quickly become used to what we're doing, and they're actually usually ahead of the game uh, with the technology much, much uh, quicker than we are. So uh, without further ado, we'll crack on. And every week we start the session uh, with a game, don't we, Pai? We do indeed. So uh, we're going to begin um, a game. David and I will play the game first of all, and then John will put up a timer on the screen and it'll be over to you to play the game. So this is just a little oral warm up. Get us going, get us thinking, get us gathering ideas. David, do you want to be partner A or partner B? Um, I'll go with partner A. Oh. OK, so after a bit, we'll swap over. 
Um, so partner A has to invent a type of mask using some sort of color or something that, so you could say the, the blue mask, or you could say um, the leaf mask. And a leaf mask would be obviously a green one. So you could go for either. And then uh, my job is to say what it's invented of. So if you give me something green, I've got to think of three things that are green, preferably not going for the cliche. The cliche is the obvious thing. So the most obvious thing that's green is grass. So I'm going to try and avoid that because everybody else will think of the cliche. So I've got to try and come up with three things, two or three things, maybe only one thing um, that's made of that colour. So what are you going to give me, John? Uh, not John, David. Um, I'm going to give you the, um, let's go with the crisp white musk is made of fresh hospital bed sheets, um, the edges of spring clouds, and an albino rabbit's fur. So I went for three things that I thought nobody else was going to think of, and I added a little detail in. OK, chuck another one at me, see what I can make of it. Um, what about uh, the, gr the mint green? <laughs> Musk. OK. Um, OK, so is made from um, minted chocolate chip ice cream. Uh, let me go for another greeny one. Uh, peppermint sprouting in the garden. And oh, it's really hard to get a third one. And um, OK, I'm going to go for a bit of an obvious one, but I'll dress it up a, a wee bit. And the leaves from oak trees in a vast fairy tale forest. So I took an obvious one, a leaf, but I dressed it up a little bit. OK, chuck another one at me. Um, I'll go with um, the mustard mask. Oh, I like that one. The mustard mask. Now, mustard is sort of yellowy brown color um the mustard mask is made from uh okay is made from the color of ripe cheddar cheese um the the sting from uh a nettle because that's the sort of that's the taste and i'll go for another color one and um and uh, the bite, the sudden bite of lemon on your tongue. Mm, very good. Uh, do you want another one? Yeah, give me one more and I'll give you a couple. Um, what about the plum coloured musk? Well, I like plums a lot. I'm very fond of Victoria plums. OK, and that's a sort of deep, rich, pinky um pinky purpley type carrot color isn't it mm. okay so the plum colored mask is made from spring cherry blossom um the color of red wine and a rotting chunk of meat OK, I'm going to give you that's a nasty one, isn't it? Okay. I'll give you a couple. So after two minutes, you'll swap roles and John will tell you when to swap roles. So now I've got to think of some different masks. and David's got to say what they're made of. So I'm going to give you the cloud, uh, the storm cloud mask. OK, so the storm cloud mask is made from... Can I do, can, would it be okay to put the sound of something? Yes, I, I think any sense would do us, yes. Yeah, I'm going for the sound, the sound of crashing cymbals. Yep. The, the darkness of a black hole. Yep. And the flashing of a truck's headlights. Okay, love that one. Let's go for um, now, is that a cloud mask? 
let, let, uh, let a storm cloud mask. Let's go for um, a hedgerow mask. A hedgerow mask. Oh, uh, so the hedgerow mask is made from. A million tiny ants. Um, I love this. The, you can almost yeah. see see the cogs working, can't yeah, you? Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the canopy, um, the canopy of the Amazon rainforest, and I'm trying to think of the wood now because the hedges you get are quite woody. So um, yes. the the bark of an ancient oak tree. Okay, final one: the wasp mask. Oh, I hate wasps. So do I. I, uh, like I was it. oh, when I was four years old, I was stung over a hundred times uh, by uh, wasps. So yes, I do not like them. Um, okay. So. Yes, this could be quite a negative one. It's my revenge time. Um, the wasp mask is made up, is, is, is made from oof, acid from a nuclear power plant. Rotten eggs. Um, fermented rotten eggs. I've seen that on things like I'm a Celebrity to Get Me Out of Here when they've got to eat a horrible, smelly, rotten, fermented egg. Um, and I'm trying to think because wasps are very pointy and I don't trust pointy things. Um, uh, are made from blades from your dad's razor. Okay, that will do us. So I think we've all got the idea. You can go for the ordinary colour, like the orange mask is made from, and in the notes there's some uh, grids with ideas on them. Or see if you can do what we were doing, which is where you say the volcano mask, and then your partner has to come up with sort of red, fiery things. You can do sound of, taste of, uh, smell of etc to help you and try and come up with unusual ideas so you need a bit of thinking time right. John. so yeah I, I was just about to say you can now you now play this in your classroom for four minutes and we'll go quiet i'm going to put a timer on the screen and when i start the timer that's your time to play the game in the classroom and uh after two minutes i will just interject and say time to swap roles so if you're the person inventing the mask you swap to the person describing what it's made of and vice versa so four minutes on the clock starting now
time to swap over. Right, that sound signifies the end of the game. So if you could bring your attention back to the whiteboard or television or however it is you're watching the session. Okay, so what we'll carry on. So what we do after the game is we go to our first uh, activity, which is on the Teaching Live website. So I'll just bring the Teaching Live website up for you and show you how it all works. So this is the Teaching Live website, it's teachinglive.net, and you'll see across the top of the website, there is a, uh, a menu uh, that's green in color. And if you go across the top, almost to the end, there's a section that says demos, and underneath it says masks and poetry taster session. If I click on the masks and poetry taster session, <coughs> excuse me, it says welcome today's to today's mask and poetry session. And you can see uh, a, a session of green buttons on here. And uh, when you're on, if you do sign up to teaching live each week looks pretty much the same. And there are a sequence of buttons that we go through pretty much in order. So the first activity we do is we go on to the Padlet activity. So you need to click on the Padlet button and then you need to listen to Pi as he tells you uh, what he would like you to do. So what are we doing this morning, Pi? Okay, so in a moment, we're all gonna have a go at doing some writing um, and we're gonna follow the same pattern. So don't change the pattern, stick to my pattern. I put on the mask of, and then you've got to invent something. So I put on the mask of, let's have David's mask of wasps. I put on the mask of wasps and, and then you've got to decide what happened when you put the mask of wasps and was stung a hundred times. That's a really, really nasty one, isn't it? Let's invent another one. John, what, what should we have? I put on the mask of, Oh, let's have the mask of uh, let's have the mask of bicycles. <laughs> yes, John's a great bicyclist. I put on the mask of bicycles and my eyes spun round like wheels. Let's <laughs> do another one. Now, of course, you can make a mask because we're playing about. You can make a mask out of anything. So I put on the mask of I'm looking around. I'm in the kitchen now. I'm looking around and I can see a tangerine. I put on the mask of tangerines and. Oh, here's a nasty thought. You know how you peel a tangerine? 
and my eyes were peeled back. Oh, that's a horrible one. Let's do another one, David. Are you ready? I put on the mask of. Uh, let's go with a mask of fog. Fog. OK, I put on the mask of fog and stumbled um, and stumbled through the mist, unable to see where I was going, something or other like that. And obviously what happens to you has to relate back to the mask that you've got. So we could have some great ideas just doing that. But I've put in five little challenges, John. And my first one is alliteration. I put on the mask of now, if we were going to do the mask of bicycles, you've got to come up with an adjective that starts with the same beginning sound. So what would you have? Something bicycles. Brilliant bicycles. OK, I put on the mask of brilliant bicycles and my eyes um, spun like spirals. Hey, that was pretty good going. I managed to get it into the second line. So that's alliteration. <laughs> Simply using uh, um, as, I put on the mask of custard. Now I've got to use uh, a simile. As, um, as thick as, um, as thick as frog spawn. How about that? Now I'm going to try one using like. I put on the mask of, what should we have? Clouds and um, drifted like um, huge soft whales in the blue of the sky. And then you've got personification, and that's where you make an object come alive. So give me an object, John. I put on the mask of... Um, flower vases. Of flower vases, and now you've got to make the flower vase do something a human would do for personification. And oh, and they tap danced. Uh, and the, the mask of flower dances, and they tap danced on the windowsill. And then the last and the hardest is an impossible combination. I put on the mask of, of stars, that would be a nice one to do. And then you've got to have something that's completely and utterly um, impossible. And uh, I put on the mask of stars and shone as brilliant as a black hole. And of course, black holes you can't see and they're black and they're an opposite. So in my example there, I've got candle flames froze. Well, they can't freeze. So that's, a, that's the hardest one. So John, now we've gone through some possibilities for having a bit of fun and writing some about some masks and what happens to us when we put them on. What, how do we get on to do the writing? So what we do next, underneath the uh, examples that you've put on the page, Pi, we have a button that says click to open Padlet. So we'll click on the button and up will come a blank Padlet screen. And I can see that people are starting to connect to this. In the bottom right hand corner of the Padlet, you can see a plus button. If I click on the plus, up pops a, what well, I call it a post-it note. So I'm going to, first thing in the subject box, put your first name and the name of your school. I'll just put where I am. And then uh, then I, I, I'll put, type in the box underneath. I put on the mask of, go on, what, what sort of mask pie? I put um, on the mask of. Oh, you like cheese, don't you? I do. <laughs> How about that? I put on the mask of cheese. And whilst you're writing that, John, I'll just say, because I see a lot of people uh, doing this, is when they've pressed the enter button after putting their name in, they've submitted their name and nothing else. Uh, right. Yes. OK. So so don't click. Don't press it. Use your mouse to click into the box underneath. And crumbled. Uh, and crumbled. I'm going to go for a... Um, Simile and crumbled like a crumbled like a cookie in a jar. There we go. Don't forget my full stop. And then once I've finished my um, sentence, I click submit, and that goes to David. And you can see on mine, it says awaiting approval and David approves it. 
<coughs> so when he sees them, I can see we've got over 150 people connected, which is fantastic. So somebody called Pi from Stroud, I put on the mask of snow and my legs froze. I put on the mask of mischievous mice and cats chased me under the table. What I'm noticing, because I'm going to put, start putting them through now, children, is that most of the ones coming through have no full stop at the end. Oh, dear. So Clark from Fish Cross Primary, well done, you got the first one up. I put <laughs> on the mask of volcanoes and all the wa water in the world um, turned into molten lava. Really like the idea, but Clark, you've missed the full stop out. So what you can do is you can click on the three dots next to your um, post-it and up will come, if I do it on mine, you'll see there's a little edit function appears. And if I click on edit, it opens up my post-it I can edit it and I can click submit again. So do take care. Um, Finley from Arbury. I put on the mask of death and half of reality desecrated. Interesting. Interesting idea. And Clark uh, from Fish Cross. I like um, getting a cut. But, well, we've got Rams here. I put on the mask of terrible tangerines and was killed by it with oily oranges. Remember your full stop, Ramsey. You knit back and edit that, but you've got a couple of good ideas running um, there. And I also mentioned Clark as well um, from Fresh Cross. I put on the mask of volcanoes and all <coughs> the water in the world turned, turned into molten lava. Um, again, you missed your full stop off, but you've got a nice idea on the run there. Ollie from St Mungo's. I, um, I put on the mask of time, which I like, and yeah. my head turned into a clock. Yeah, I could think you could more of that idea, couldn't you, John? You could have yeah, you could you could come up with a simile or or definitely yeah. or, or the oh. fact that clocks have faces, don't they? We talk yes. about the face of the clock. Yes. So there's something there. You're onto a good idea. Um, Daniel from St. Mungo, I put on the mask of war and saw the pass full of bloody wards. So where all the people are lying, having been uh, injured. Um, yeah. Isla from Fish Cross. Fish Cross are busy this morning. Isla from Fish Cross. Um, she just moved across my screen and I've lost it temporarily. I will find it again. Where's it gone? While well, you're looking for that, Tilly from Spa Primary. I put on the mask of a terrible tiger in the jung in the tragedy's jungle. It, I like that idea of the tragedy. <laughs> I thought that was an interesting one. Presumably you were trying to do the alliteration. You got that word. And Mia from Bromham, I put on the mask of an angel, and all I could see was innocence. That's a really nice, a nice line there. And uh, Ali from Minera, 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 Minera Primary School, uh, which I think is in Wales. I put on the mask of peppers, and my eyes burned like the sun. Um, yeah. Very good, uh, Callie. Uh, don't forget your full stop. So you might want to edit that one. Yeah. And, uh... It's worth as well saying, children, if you don't see yours straight away, it's just I'm very busy approving them all. And <laughs> any that I don't get a chance to prove before we finish, I'll carry on doing after the session as well. And of course, what we're looking for are the ones that are not only accurate, but also slightly unusual. As Layla from Minera, I put on the mask of frogs. I thought that was an interesting idea and could jump as high as you would on a trampoline. Now, Liam and Connor from Arbury, here's an interesting idea. You missed your full stop, boys. Um, I put on the mask of peanut butter and flew away like a butterfly. Ooh. So I like the peanut butter, but I don't, I can't see how putting a mask of peanut butter is related to flying away like a butterfly. So you've got to try and link the two together. Ah, but he's got peanut butter, butterfly. Oh, of course, yes. Didn't spot that. Well done. Ah. ah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Playing yeah. with the yeah, idea. Sorry, boys, I'm talking nonsense. Don't listen to me. <laughs> he, does, he does that a lot. We have to keep him in order.
Right now, there was one just there. Uh, Ruby uh, and and Mevlet from my chit. I put on the mask of brilliant bees, and my eyes stung like when you get shampoo in your eyes. Now, um, you. I don't think you need to explain it. Um, and I think if you just said my eyes stung like shampoo, would be fine. Um, <clears throat> Bromham Primary, James, I put on the mask of pens and started to write amazingly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, 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 you could say I put on the mask of teaching live and then I started to write brilliantly. Yes. Dennis from St Mary's, I put on the mask of the black hole and I sucked up the world. Uh, no, I like Murray from St Mungo's because he's really sort of, he, he's... Um, He's he's used uh, something we call we call name it. I put on the mask of clouds, and it smelled like white candy floss in the dessert aisle of ASDA. Mm -hmm. And I like this because it's very specific. It helps the reader um, imagine exactly where you are. Yeah, good one. How are we doing for time, John? Are we all we right? We need to move on. So we'll come out of the Padlet. So what happens now? I'm just going to go back to the session page. If you ever get lost, just go to teachinglive.net, go back along to the demo session and click on the demo to load up the page again. So um, <clears throat> another thing that we like to do on Teaching Live, now just before I do that, I'll just say that the Padlet remains after the session, so you can come back here, teachers, and refer to the Padlet and look at your examples of what was good, what wasn't so good, uh, what you liked, what you didn't like, etc. Uh, David will moderate everything else that's coming through. So that will be up to date within um, a, a little while after the end of the session. Uh, another thing that we like to do every week is we like to uh, play some audio. So what we do when children write poems or stories, we ask them to record their writing um, using uh, a, a, an iPad or a, or a phone or whatever, and send it to us. And we'll we'll play one or two every week on the session, just to uh, illustrate how well uh, well you're writing. So, David, have we got um, an audio this morning? We we have indeed, and uh, I know we've we've got for this session and the next demo session, we've got a, quite a lot of Scottish schools. Uh, signed up. Um, so I'm going to share with you a poem written by a boy called Finlay. And we know Finlay well because he's done a number of uh, terms with us. And he goes to St. Patrick's Primary School in, I think it's Troon, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, Troon. And this poem is called, um, this, uh, the poem is full of amazing things. That's what it's called. And I'll just turn my volume up and I'll play this. It's only a minute long, but I'll play it for you. It's what we like. Well, we'll talk about what we like about it, but specifically the performance of it and the way, just the way Finley delivers it. So here it is, the poem of amazing things. This is a poem full of amazing things. Everything is amazing. This is a poem full of amazing things made just for you. It's full of dinosaurs stomping. It's full of giant clocks ticking. It's full of lions chomping. It's full of tongues licking. It's full of writers writing. It's full of people bowling. It's full of soldiers fighting. It's full of balls rolling. It's full of small socks. It's full of chalks. It's full of little rocks. It's full of long walks. It's full of nice drinks. It's full of good songs. It's full of a lot of winks. It's full of multiple King Kongs. It's all been put inside this poem. Stuff from the first paragraph to the last. This is a poem full of amazing things made just for you. 
Oh, it's a while since I've heard that pie, but I still love it. There's something about it, isn't there? There's something about, I mean, in a way, it's just a simple list um, that he's going to, uh, things put in. Um, and he's managed to make some of them rhyme, which works, because usually when you use rhyme, it doesn't work, but that seems to work okay. There's something, though, about the way he paces it. This is yeah, a poem. It's got yes. rhythm, hasn't it? Mm. Sorry? It has rhythm. It does have rhythm, and it's um, he just says it crisply and clearly, and uh, I never tire of listening to that. Mark, he's got a very, very good reading voice. So yes. every every session we have, there's an opportunity for um, after after the session, once you've written up your blog challenge, your final writing piece, you can then record it, and we always listen to one or two. Uh, uh, some, sometimes it's poetry we're doing, or sometimes it's story, and sometimes it's nonfiction. So that's one of the features. Um, shall we jot cast now, John? Yes, indeed. So we'll go back to the uh, Teaching Live website. <clears throat> and we'll click on the green button that says live writing jotcast. So what we tend to do here is we tend to extend what we were doing on the Padlet. Not always, but usually it's uh, building on the previous session. So what are we doing uh, here, Pi? Well, I've got a little model poem here. If I was called in to create a mask. So uh, it's sort of a bit of an imaginary situation. But what you'll notice, John, is that in blue, my opening lines there in blue, I go through the senses. I would take the sight of, the sound of, the taste of, the touch of, and then the last verse is slightly different. Um, so I'll read it to you. I would take the sight of a golden bar of sunlight found sleeping on a windowsill, the green from a bus trundling down bleak street, and the vivid blue of a damsel fish. I would take the sound of a friend's laughter exploding after a bombshell joke, the crush of a distant comet rushing past Mars, and the fury of a swarm of belligerent bees. I would take the taste of strawberry slices like slithers of ruby on vanilla ice, the lick of salted skin after sea swimming, and my grand's goat curry simmering. I would take the touch of a pink seashell, smooth inside but covered in tough grit, a cat's fur, sorry, a cat's purr beneath soft fur, and baby Noah's chubby cheeks. I would take, so in this last one, I've really gone for a bit of alliteration, <laughs> a clock's intricate design of wheels and cogs, a clam's grip, a cloud's softness, a cloak's shadow, a clown's clapped applause, a brooch's clasp, and the click of a finger snap. So obviously we haven't got time to do all of that, but we have got time to write some sentences using based around the senses. So if you were asked to create a magical mask, what sound or touch or taste would you use? Now I've got three examples there. I would take the sound of a JCB digging. Now I'm thinking about that, John, because literally over the road there, they're doing some work and there are two huge diggers there. So it was in my mind. And the wing beats of a red admiral. So I've got a really big thing, but also a contrast a red admiral is a sort of butterfly. So I've got a really big, heavy, strong thing and a very feeble, um, fluttery thing. I would take the touch of the metallic fridge freezer and my grand's cold hands. So both of those things are very, very cold. And then my taste, I would take the taste of pistachio ice cream, sea salt on the back of my hand and marmite on toast. So in that one, I got three things. Well, you could have one thing, two things or three things. But the challenge is to write sentences. Either I would take the sight of the sound of the taste of the touch of or try that alliterative type ending and uh, do it at sent one sentence at a time. Now, John will model how we use the Jotcast. So underneath the Jotcast, underneath the uh, 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 Pi's example and his poem, <laughs> We've got a, a little window with a green box at the bottom. Again, put your name and your school. Really important to do that so we can name check you. Uh, and then click in the box underneath. Don't use enter. And then type your um, 
and I'm going to go left field here. I'm going to introduce another idea. I will, I'm going to take the movement of my uh -huh. muscles. So I'm pushing my bicycle pedals. So I'm I'm going to take the movement. If I could spell pedals, it would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Um, so I've gone for a bit of alliteration, and I'm sure I could work on that one. Movement of my muscles moving. I don't like moving because it's movement and moving. What about uh, flexing? Mashing. mashing. I'm okay. gonna mashing. Uh, mashing my uh, bicycle pedals. And then I'm going to click send. And it goes to David for moderation. And David will post it up uh, when he gets it. And there it is. Again, really important to check your punctuation before sending, please, because I know we'll have quite a few coming that don't have them. Yeah, that's something every week we go on uh, when we do teaching live uh, as a 10 week session. Uh, we always get um, uh, children who are so wanting to get their work up so fast that they forget the basic punctuation like Jensen. Um, I would take the movement of an engine going very fast. Uh, yep, that's fine, but you've forgotten. Yep, full stop, Jensen. So, and um, often with these things, the the first idea can be good, but it um, sometimes you need to work on it to get it right. I would take the Noah from. Bar primary. I would take the sound of a car driving on the motorway. Yes, but you could use name it there, um, Noah. So what sort of car is it? Um, and what motorway is it? So what? think of a motorway that's near you. I would take the sound of... Um, <coughs> um, I'm going to go really old school here. I would take the sound of an Austin Allegro driving on the M6. Um, I like Clark's again from Fish Cross. I would take the movement of a treadmill conveyor belt. And I like that, Clark, because it's a little bit unusual. Now, Philip, I like your dump, the dumpling idea, um, but the next bit is a bit vague. But it, but it be something different. That doesn't quite make sense, does it? But your, your dumpling idea, I like. Jensen, I take the movement of a engine. I think you mean an engine. I mean, that word going... You could really strengthen that speeding or rotating or powering. <coughs> Mila from Fish Cross. I would take the sound of sand crunching. Now you can extend mm. that idea, uh, Mila. I like the, the sound of sand crunching. That's good. But you could make it specific uh, and say, I don't know where Fish, Croc is, Fish Cross is, but I would, I, I know that. Um, there's a beach at Troon, for example. I would take the sound of sand crunching on Troon Beach. Um, or I would take, if there's a beach near Fish Cross, it could be, I would take the sound of sand crunching on Fish Cross Beach. Now, there might not be a beach in Fish Cross, I don't know. But you get the idea. Yeah, I'm liking Luke um, from Spa, um, who's got a lavender, the smell of a lavender candle. And Isabel and Killian from Manera, the sound of a water bottle filling up, that sort of gluggy sound. And Seth, I like your ideas, full stop needed, but I like the ideas. And Priya and Diamond, for CPS, the sound of a desperate scream and a police car whizzing on the busy road. Well, full stop yeah. needed, but that desperate scream and the police car, uh, yeah. That, That's really painful. And Mia, it is, yeah, Mia from Brom, Bromham, touch of dreamy clouds in the sky. Now, Ruby has started her poem. I'm not sure which school you're at, Ruby. I would take the sound of a cow. I would take the touch of the rain. I would take the taste of cookie, get cookie dough. Now, what I'd like you to do is for each one is to extend the idea. I would take the sound of a cow in a field on uh, Mr. Turner's farm, or I would take the touch of the rain on my cheek uh, in, a, in a spring shower. I would take the taste of cookie dough 
from my grandmother's kitchen. So each one try and extend the idea. <clears throat> so Ella from Jake. Bomber. Go on. Ella from Bomber. I would take the sound of a basketball hitting the ground on the court. So it's not just the sound of a basketball. It's the sound of the basketball doing something. Yeah. Jake has been listening. Uh, he's got, I'd take the roar of a speeding Ferrari. And, and a, a, a weaker writer would have written, I, I would take the sound of a car going along. And you can see the roar of a speeding Ferrari is a stronger picture. Um, Tabia, Tabor, sorry if I get your name wrong, the urge of anger and the sound of a purring cat, like that urge of anger. And Jaden, Mary's, the sound of wind sinking into your ears. <laughs> I'll take the taste of bubblegum ice cream and the sound of a watermelon getting destroyed by my dad's hammer. I'm not <laughs> sure why your dad would be hitting a watermelon. <laughs> Is it so, uh, <laughs> really interesting? My mind boggles. I would take the sound of a toaster popping. Harrison from Smith Cross, from Fish Cross, sorry. Bill? Bill from CPS, I'd take the silence of an anonymous crowd. Homer, the glint of a stranger's eyes, of strangers' eyes meeting, and the warmth of a smile from a stranger. Got nice ideas there. You repeat this stranger, which um, probably detracts a little, but you're on to something good there. Um, and Annabelle, I like your idea of the fog spreading. Oh, I like Ada from St Mungo's. Um, I, I, to take the smell of a nice clean car straight from the dealership. Oof. That's that's good. I it's the the straight from the dealership that really makes that yes. right? because because everybody sort of then is thinking, oh, brand new clean car. It's uh, it's good. It's good. Yeah, and anything that paints a picture for the reader is 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 really good. Um, it's about I, detail, isn't it, John? And, yes. and naming. So Alfie and Jamie from Minera, I would take the movement of a butterfly and the sound of a bird early in the morning. Now, <clears throat> the sound of a bird, um, I'm, I'm having a bit, uh, it's a bit vague. Uh, so I would say the sound, it could be the, the caw of a crow. It could be the um, coo of a dove. It could be the song of a blackbird. So by making it a specific type of bird, you can paint the picture much more vividly in the reader's mind. <clears throat> I like oh, Abigail from Bromham. I take the sound of the screech of a dramatic violin. I like that idea of the dramatic violin. Well done. There's some, there's some, good, some great ideas coming out here, Pi. They certainly are. And Faith, um, I think that oh, must be go. English. Right. I'll sorry, take the sorry, sound. Sorry. I'd take the sound of an ocean crashing against the promenade in Newcastle. So a nice bit of name it. Uh, Freya Ray from you... Finzine. I would take the sound yeah. of robins chirping in the morning. So in, by, by, by saying robins uh, chirping in the morning, you've painted a much more vivid picture than a, just a bird in the morning. And coyotes howling on a mountaintop. Love it. Very good, Freya. So we'll come out of the... Go back to the uh, session page. <coughs> uh, again, as before, the live writing jotcast will get updated by David. While Pi and I are, are, are babbling on, David's busy in the background, moderating away as, as all these uh, posts come through. And they'll remain for after the session for you to refer back to when it comes to writing your own poems. So another thing that we like to do every week, and the mask uh, poetry sessions are a really good one for this, is to have a gallery challenge. It's completely optional. Um, and um, it's a, a piece of artwork associated with the writing that we're doing. So in, obviously with the gallery challenge, it's, um, it's masks. So people drawing and designing masks. Um, and there's loads and loads of lots of examples of dramatic masks that have been made. And sometimes uh, people have uh, explained a little bit about them. Um, some people even stitched masks. Um, all sorts of different masks that people have submitted 
uh, to the, uh, it's just a Padlet. And again, if you click on the plus sign, <coughs> you have the ability to upload uh, pictures, which I think is the fourth one along, uh, fourth hexagon along. Uh, you can upload a picture. So you can take a picture using your device and then upload it to the um, uh, Padlet. And again, also you can click on the camera icon, which will use the camera on your device and you can take a picture that way as well. So there's there's absolutely loads and loads of, you can see it's full of incredibly careful drawings and some clay masks and all sorts, um, particularly taken with this some of these. Oh, it is, yeah. Um, uh, just lots and lots and lots. So every week in Teaching Live, we always have a little art gallery, uh, artistic challenge as well as the writing challenge. So the last thing we do every week is the blog challenge. And the blog challenge is uh, a piece of extended writing, which you don't do in the session. You do after the session. It can be done as homework or in class. Uh, it depends on how your teacher manages your time. Um, and it will usually be an extended piece of writing building on what we've been doing in the session. In this case, writing poems about masks. Yeah. Now in the notes, John, I've given various in the teacher's notes, various different possibilities, um, different ways of, of doing this so that children could actually choose. Um, and the one I've put up here, I've called a rainbow of masks. I've Kept it fairly simple, um, my model. But as I say in the notes, there are various other examples. I'll read it to you. I wore the blue mask and saw a single eye staring back, the sky waiting patiently, and a kingfisher diving. I wore the yellow mask and saw a primrose forging promises, a canary singing lullabies, and a shred of lemon tingling your tongue. I wore the red mask and saw a field of poppies, one fiery eye fidgeting, and a tomato peeling back its skin. I wore the white mask and saw a barn owl's face, a blank and patient page, and a clown's mask of anonymity. I wore the ebony mask and saw the midnight cat paws, charcoal fingers fumbling, and a cloak made of shadows. I wore the green mask and saw a tuft of mint, an emerald catching the light, and a cactus surviving. So, right. John, once yeah. everybody has written theirs, and generally speaking, people do that in their English book, a bit of drafting, a bit of response partnering, feedback from um, maybe um, your peers, but also the teacher. And when you've got it exactly as you'd like it, and you're really, really pleased. What, what, how do they get it onto the site? Right. So what we have underneath, uh, if I go back to the blog challenge page, if you go click on the blog challenge page, you'll see Pi's poem there. And there are other examples, as he mentioned, in the teacher's notes. Underneath, there is a form for you to fill in. Uh, put the title of your blog post, the title of your poem, write your first name in the box and your school name. <coughs> Quick note, teachers, if everybody uses exactly the same school name spelt in the same way, and I know with some schools that can be quite complicated, you agree a tag for your school name. So you might just say Fish Cross or you might say Fish Cross Primary. Um, but if everybody uses exactly the same, then all your posts will be collected together, which will make them easier to find. Now, here is a box for you to write your poem in. Now, what we recommend you do is you uh, actually do it in a different word processor and copy and paste it into this box, okay? Um, that way you've got a backup in case every, anything goes wrong, but you can write it directly in here if you want to. You then just click uh, to consent to the privacy policy and click submit. Only click submit once, please. We sometimes have people submitting multiple poems. Now, you're, once you've done that, your poem will not appear instantly. It will go into moderation and uh, David will moderate it. Um, 
And once it uh, has been moderated, you can see in the sidebar of the blog, there are some orange tags. And there will be a, I think I've called the tag March Demos, Masks and Poetry or something like that. You'll see a tag appearing which says March Demos. Uh, I think it says Masks and Poetry. And if you click on that, you will see all your writing submitted uh, from this session. So that's where you will find it under specials and demos in the, if you go to uh, pupil posts at the top, you'll see the tags appearing on the side and it's on the orange tags. Uh, it'll be March demos, masks and poetry or something like that. So that's how you get your um, blog post on to the site. And every week we will uh, we give you a blog challenge as an extended piece of writing and that uh, that um, gets submitted in your own time <coughs> ready for the next session. Now, the teaching live sessions themselves, we run 10 sessions every term and each term we follow. Uh, we use a book to inspire our writing uh, and we do. Um, usually do three poetry sessions, four uh, creative writing, story writing sessions, and the four story writing sessions are all linked one after the other. So each week is a, diff a separate chapter of the same story. Uh, and we really like that uh, approach because it uh, gives children the opportunity to write extended stories. And then we'll do three non-fiction writing sessions covering things like persuasive writing, report writing, and so on. Anything you want to add to that, Pai? I think we're going to be working with Dark Whispers, which is the second book in the Bright Storm series. Um, so some of you may well know Vashti Hardy's story uh, novel, Bright Storm. Um, we've already looked at that one couple of times actually on Teaching Live. It's always been very, very popular. And the second book in the series is called Dark Whispers. You don't have to have read the first book, but the second one is an exciting adventure, um, absolutely bound to grip everybody. Uh, so we'll be working probably with that book. Um, and uh, sometimes we also have a non-fiction book that we look at as well. Um, so we've started gently today, haven't we, John? It was relatively easy. Yeah, um, people great, have yeah. done very, very well. Lots of good ideas, lots of great use of uh, language as well. Uh, so we've got a good group here and um, it would be great if people could sign up and we could work together over the next term. Yes. Uh, so that thank would be you. Fantastic. So, yeah, thank you for joining us uh, this morning. We hope you've enjoyed it. So teachers will I'll write to you after this session uh, to give you details of how to sign up to teaching live for the summer term. Uh, and a special offer for teachers for schools that have taken part in um, one of our demo sessions. So children, get working on your poems. We hope you've enjoyed uh, joining in and writing this morning. We've certainly enjoyed reading all your writing and uh, we'll be sending out dates and times for the summer terms work very shortly, uh, in fact, this week. So we'll make sure you get a copy of all that information to your school and we hope you can join us in the summer term. So it's bye from me. Yeah, well done, everyone. Bye. OK, bye, everyone. Yeah, looking forward to seeing your poems. Well done. Yep. So uh, we'll look forward to those uh, coming in and hopefully see you in the summer term. Bye bye.